the mount. Well, it comes down to uh, it's on the south side. Yeah. yeah. The, the, it might be actually part of your property. No, no, no. no what happened oh, was since they put in this, a, this uh, a, a retaining wall, sure at one point, a retaining wall with three feet into her property. <coughs> last so time. I put my fence up, and also when I looked at the description from the, the previous owner, I said that. it's extremely close to the garage. Uh, so I built it based on the retaining wall, but it's really three feet into her property. So what I'm saying is, oh, I like, no. and we've already got a, a, a big agreement that she passes on. That's what I'm worried about. You know? Yeah. So I'd like. Yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah. Good, good thoughts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good. 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 I'm connected with Louis. He was telling me about yeah. the game. Are you the owner? Yeah. That's that's you guys. Meet. I'm the guy that I'm going to be your aspirin. <laughs> right, well. Okay, I'm going to take you all your headaches. Okay. I'm taking my contract to test Monday. Okay. When I come back to town on Wednesday, I'm ready to go into business. All right. Let's, all right. Let's talk. I'm here. Let me give you my card. Let me get that part right now. Yeah. I passed cards on to some of your guys. Okay. One of them was Jacob, right? Real nice guy. Is he injured? Well, you have one guy over there. Um, not that I can remember. Good evening, Peter. There are two guys that I met. Oh, sure. And, yeah, I some, like, guys that are the and then you got Jay working there for yeah, you. Yeah. Let me text this. All right. Council Yeah, he's talking. Like, he's joining us. Dave, how long have you been doing that? I've been taking care of things for 13 years. That's all right. There's stuff that you can't find oh, yeah. unless you know it's there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We went through the whole thing. We got it in the shop. I look no. forward to oh, your, your envision, and I hope you can make it happen. No, I, you know, all right. All right. I, I'm going to have to look at our latest uh, MOU adjustment rate. I'm not sure. We used to get back to that. And there's only one big day, so yeah, I'm big yeah. day. <laughs> <laughs> Most of it's good. Most of it's crazy life. It's part of it, but that's not. So that's in the back here. I didn't see it. I waited at Wendy. I was like, I just got here at like minute six. Okay. Oh, there's a chair. And, uh, good evening, everyone. I'd like to uh, call the meeting of the Dunsbury City Council to order at uh, 6 04 p.m. on November 17th. Yes, sir. Oops, would you like to lead me to some flags, please? Yes, sir. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a brief roll call. Council Member Aris? Here. Council Member Lucchese? Here. Council Member Keisler? Here. Council Member Doish? Here. And Mayor Bryant? Uh, present also. Uh, so, for special presentations and announcements, um, two, two items came up uh, since the printing of this agenda. Uh, first, as a special guest, um, I've invited uh, the new owner of the Cave Springs Hotel property, um, Mr. Benjamin Goodpasture, to come uh, introduce himself. I met him about six months ago or so over the phone, and uh, he has a deep passion for this mountain area and uh, making it a viable business for people to thrive and visit. So um, he's here. If you want to come to the podium and introduce yourself. That'd be great. Thank you. Hey, guys. My name is Benjamin Goodpasture. Uh, as Matthew said, we just bought the Cave Springs Hotel and Resort, and uh, it is an honor. I just want to say it is an honor to uh, to be the one to be able to take care of the torch to the next uh, generation. Have so much respect and admiration for for Louis and his family. Uh, great human being. So, so yeah, we. I'm originally from Virginia. I've been in Reading for the last um, twelve years, and. Uh, my wife, Kylie, and I, we have three kids and one on the way. So we've got a six, four, two, and 
uh, you know, zero one coming in Christmas. Oh, so yeah, we've got a full house uh, right now. And uh, we, we own a property up in Mount Chasta. We have a little cabin that we love to stay at. And so we've we come up here often, love the outdoors. So I grew up in Virginia in the mountains, climbing, fishing, hunting. And so that's, uh, it's in my blood, runs pretty deep. But uh, far as Cave Springs goes, uh, yeah, I mean, our heart is to create this beautiful destination. You know, we really want to, um, the outdoors speaks for themselves, it's beautiful, but we want to have a base camp for people to come that's beautiful, that they can rest, a place that is open year round. So uh, yeah, we've already started work. We're working on a hotel. We're excited about revamping the place, making it um, a destination. So I don't want to share too much. I could probably talk for hours about it, but um, I'm going to be up here a lot. Feel free to stop by. I'd love to get to know you guys, and we're excited to invest in this community. Question? So. Thank you. Yeah, there. Um, where in Virginia? Southwest, or Roanoke, in the Blue Ridge. I lived in Roanoke for 10 years, so okay. there you go. Yep, that's cool. That's what I thought you were going to say. Right. Any additional questions? I'd just like comments? to say welcome to the neighborhood, bro. Thank you. Good luck. Appreciate it. Councilman Arnold. Well, uh, it's a significant undertaking. I'm sure you have a vision and a plan. How much can you share with the community? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the, the hotel is in, is in great shape. I love the bones. And so we're doing, it's just very cosmetic, you know, as far as paint and furniture and the roof. Uh, the cabins are in, you know, they're 100 years old. So, I mean, there's uh, only so much we can do there. We've, we've kind of gone different paths on like, do we uh, remodel them or do we, you know, do we have to demo them down and rebuild them? So most likely we're going to have to start over on them, but we are going to keep at least one as like an ode to the old. And we're going to kind of keep the, the old charm and the rustic feel, like the cool keys, things like that um in in at least one of them the rest will be kind of a more of a scandinavian kind of vibe and architecture that i really like so and then with the the mobile rv area that's we want to bring in some air streams so we want to make we want to make the whole park cohesive we, you know wants to be all vacation rentals so we'll renovate some of the mobiles make them more like cabins and then bring in um uh, air streams and and then, yeah, just kind of make it, uh, and then with a, a, you know, common ground area, we'll have like really cool fire pits, things like that to just create a community atmosphere. So the, the timing to me, I've been up here 15 years is fortuitous because any number of city leaders have worked from Talendale Park up to a safe trail to Mossbury Falls. Mm -hmm with the notion of a cultural heritage you're now overseeing. Mm. Um, I think it's full of opportunities. Thank you. Yes, I agree. And I really do think this will be very appealing and my heart for this property is to take it to the next hundred years, you know, and not forgetting the past, like understand there's a big like historical thing that people love. But I also think that the biggest part of the identity of that place is the river, the location, the land, the hospitality that we created. And so for me, a big part of it is creating that, keeping that hospitality where it's like you create memories in the way you felt. And it's not always about like the architecture. It's about like the memories that are made. So that's what we want to create. Thank you so much. Yeah. Any additional yeah. questions? Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank uh, you, guys. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Welcome to our town. All right. Uh, next, um, if, if people were not aware of it, approximately 4.30 on Tuesday, uh, there was another derailment at Cantera Loop. Um, and, you know, it appears to be from the reports we have received that um, it wasn't a serious concern. The cars were empty. Um, I do have a guest tonight to help bring us up to speed on this. Uh, Union Pacific was not necessarily the most forthright in getting the report to us. So I know there's some concern in the community. So we have uh, Francisco uh, Castillo on with us tonight, representing Union Pacific to give us an update. Appreciate it, Mayor Brian and council members. Uh, sorry I couldn't be there in person. I'm in uh, Sacramento. 
Uh, but wanted to, um, my name is Francisco, Senior Director of Public Affairs for UP. Wanted to take this opportunity uh, to provide an update on the derailment that occurred five miles northwest of Dunsmuir. And that, like you said, was on Tuesday at around 2.30 p.m. Uh, so there were nine empty rail cars uh, that derailed on a single main line track. Uh, there were no injuries, no exposures, no impact to waterways, no collision of on-track equipment, and vandalism was ruled out. Uh, the derailed cars were empty lumber cars. Uh, the cars were moved off the right of way that night and train traffic resumed at, on Tuesday at around 11 p.m. And that site was also cleared by Wednesday at 2.30 p.m. And what they did was the nine rail cars that were positioned, uh, that, were, that were derailed were positioned back on the track and pulled into the UP Dunsmuir yard. Uh, and currently the incident is under, is under investigation. So that's the, the site is cleared. Uh, the site was cleared this uh, Wednesday at 2.30 p.m. And, uh, and I, I recognize uh, the community's frustration and I will commit to ensure that in the future, I will notify you um, or the city manager when an incident like this occurs. But rest assured, if there was a hazmat and a serious uh, incident, I would have, you would have been the first one to get a call. Thank you, uh, Mr. Castillo. Are there questions? Yeah. Uh, Councilman Kaiser. So we got lucky. What's that? We got lucky again. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it luck, council member, but uh, I'm giving you the facts of the derailment and uh, there were no injuries and uh, the cars, real cars were empty. But one thing I can add, um, I personally investigated the site and it is cleaned up and um, there was no apparent damage to the, the river site. Um, so as far as first person presence for Dunsmuir, um, that was confirmed today. Uh, any additional questions or comments? He's got one that I'd like one. Uh, Councilman Arm? Well, the question is, I didn't hear you say Contera Loop. How close was the derail to Contera Loop? It was not too far from there. It was at the, cross, it was at the Contera Loop crossing. And I just have to say, as someone who is a big part of the 1991 Southern Pacific still <clears throat> spill that sterilized the upper sack and wounded this community, it just seems to me somewhat cavalier. I went with Mayor Bryan to a 17 car derail right across Contera Loop, not that long ago. And after the SP spill in 1991, the state of California said this is never going to happen again. And yet it seems to happen on somewhat of a routine basis. And Union Pacific sort of thinks it's the cost of doing business. How are you going to change that? I disagree with that comment in terms of the cost of doing business, Council Member. I think we have a safe railroad um, in, in, our, in California and in our 23 state network. We have a pretty robust track uh, inspection uh, that goes on across our entire network throughout the state of California and our 23 state network. We're proud of our safety record. Uh, I can send you some stats in terms of the safety record. We're one of the safest in terms of moving um, commodities from one location to another. So we're proud of our record. Um, some of these incidents are out of our control and we attend to them as soon as possible when they do occur. Uh, in this case, uh, we, you know, there, were, there was a derailment with nine rail cars that did not include uh, any injuries or any waterways were impacted. Uh, the media reported it and we provided the facts to the media as well. And the CPUC and state agencies came out. They didn't really, they, they uh, agreed that it was some, uh, a minimal derailment and they left that same day. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Councilman um, Deutsch. If I could try and look at it a little bit differently, I, I think the reason that everybody's sitting here has this anxiety is because, and I'm not pointing this at you, but because the answer is these are isolated instances. When you're sitting this close to that many isolated incidences, it cries out that somebody should say what's going on with that area of track rather than just chalking it up to the category of more isolated incidences. So I'm hoping that UP is taking a look at how can we now reevaluate and make sure we take another level so that it doesn't become another isolated incident because maybe the next one, it will have death. It will have more chemicals going into the river. And then it's just another isolated incident. So I hope there's some look at why is this happening because it has happened twice now in the last couple of years. 
Appreciate your comment, Council Member, and I'll share that with our team. Councilman McKenzie, here. All right, um, and I just. I do thank you uh, for being here tonight to, to help explain it. Uh, you know, our town just appreciates um, good communications, and we know that does go both ways. Um, we're, we're very grateful with the working relationship our city manager has been able to enjoy with your um, downtown yard cleanup crew. It just, you know, it, it's hard for us to appreciate that you guys are in good faith cleaning up an oil spill that's been going on for 120 years if we don't have good communication on something that's also kind of a vital point. Um, you know, the big assurance we'd all love to see is, you know, what what is the procedure for determining if, if a train is carrying chemicals, say, like it was in 1991, are you more careful at the amount of cars you string along there or the weight resources? We just love to see some sort of robust calculation for, you know, how you protect that. Um, the, the spill prior or spill, the derailment prior to this had two chemical cars. Um, we were told they were empty. They were removed from the site prior to the other cars. So I don't know if you could maybe get back to us on, you know, whether you have like a little file for, okay, how do we deal with Cantera to make sure if we have sensitive cargo crossing it, it will never, never end up in our river again. Um, and that would be something we'd love to, to see. Absolutely, Mayor. And I, we will share with you our um, hazmat mitigation uh, plan that we have in place. Uh, and I will pass it on to the city manager for him to share with you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we appreciate your partnership in the many projects and areas where we interact. No problem. So we can move into our general public comment for this evening. If anyone would like to make a public comment on an item not on the agenda, uh, please uh, come to the podium or if you're on Zoom, uh, you can raise your hand. You'll be allotted three minutes. Um, again, it's any item that's um, not on the agenda later. So anything generally concerning city business or anything that is on the consent agenda, uh, which today is the check registry for the last two weeks, a resolution approving the amendments to the CDBG microenterprise financial assistance and subsidies payments, um, continued on from last time, and a drought, <coughs> relief, drought relief grant agreement. Um, so if anyone has comments on those, please uh, come to the podium. State your name and address for the record. Nobody likes us. <laughs> All right. I will now close public comment uh, for the evening um, and we'll go into staff and council comments. City manager, would you like to begin? I'll do, I'll do my best. I have a bit of a sore throat. So, um, so over the past couple of weeks, uh, Actually, the most of what I've worked on is already on the agenda, but um, we've uh, we've start we closed out officially closed out on our uh, water project. We had that document on the last one, and they came through, and USDA did the inspection um, uh, Tuesday, I believe, and everything is clear, and so we are uh, officially closed out on our uh, water main replacement project. Uh, we're currently in the process of of developing our plans for the um with caltrans and uh, jacobs engineering on the butterfly bridge and uh we are working to try and figure out a way to pay for and but also replace the water main at the same time and uh, uh increase our flows so uh so we don't have to disturb that uh, area twice and so there's a we had been working on that they had dug up the, down there by the railroad twice now today they found what they were looking for so that's exciting news it's going to save us a bunch of money um <laughs> we're also uh let's see what else i do oh i met with uh met with our uh, airport engineers and uh the next project on our airport cip is coming up uh, spoke with the faa they're asking us to reduce our project by about 50 percent for cost purposes which is okay for us from um cost standpoint because we should, our share is about 5.7 percent of the cost and so that project will be spread out over two years versus one year and so that has just recently uh, gotten compressed a little bit um, which is we're, we're okay with from a staff standpoint um, we just the apron. yeah it's a north taxiway and ap and uh, apron area well we're on the subject could you clarify that our costs yeah so uh, right now it's estimated total costs about 1.5 1.6 million. And so we're looking to cut that, or no, 1.2, I apologize, 1.2. And so that project will be cut down about 600,000. 
and ours would be about five percent of that. So what is that? Well, we kind of have a we have a policy in place to uh, not, not expend any funds um, for uh, matches on grants for the airport. So okay, please revisit that. As I understood it, council just had a standing policy. We're happy to apply for any grant, but uh, intense review for any time we expend something like a five percent okay uh, match. But you know, happy to discuss it further. I guess that would go before the finance committee if it goes any further, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and there's still, I haven't seen revised plans, so I haven't brought that forward yet. And I do believe the, the history of us in getting grants was uh, we say we won't pay a grant, we never have, we won't, you know, a match. Uh, they say, okay, well, you're disadvantaged, uh, we want the airport to stay, and then we negotiate something forward. So. Yeah. Well, I like that process. Um, what else do I have? Yeah, I mean, that's really it, other than what's on the agenda, I guess. Um, <coughs> news regarding certain grant? Oh, yeah, there was, yes. The economic development grant for downtown. Um, we did receive that, 250000 for uh, um, economic development planning for revitalizing our downtown area. And so we will, once we get, we haven't seen the paperwork yet, but we will... Uh, once we will be processing that and starting that process to uh, to look at uh, the future. Is this is this the project that Todd started with that company that was down there at the? <coughs> yeah, Todd's vision was for that. Who's involved with that? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Okay. Any questions, City Manager? Thank you so okay. much. Uh, moving to council comments. Uh, oh, we got that guy over there. I'm oh, sorry. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> we know that. <laughs> All right. Um, our police chief, Sergeant Ortiz. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, the, so the report for October 2022, uh, the Sheriff's Office <clears throat> provided 687.5 hours of service last month, or yeah, October, 254 calls for service. Uh, we were up from 160 years <laughs> prior. prior. Uh, we took 25 cases. Uh, we were down one from 26 last year. We had uh, four felony, or, excuse me, two felony arrests, four misdemeanor, uh, four people booked, and uh, one citation, a site release, misdemeanor arrest. Uh, the crime levels uh, look favorable for me to present. Uh, it, it appears we're down. Uh, we stayed steady with burglaries at two apiece this year and last year. Um, our school checks are way up. Uh, we had 48 school checks last month, uh, as opposed to 19 last year. Um, so our, our security and patrol checks, uh, patrol checks we had 24, last year we had 22. Uh, security checks are 18, last year we had 13. Uh, the thefts have stayed the same, such as burglary, uh, eight and eight. Uh, we did have a traffic collision. Uh, the trespassing is up, uh, it's six, as opposed to one last year. Uh, the deputies conducted 17 traffic stops in the city and conducted seven welfare checks. Um, it, I realize it's not in the city limits, uh, but it does affect the Dunsmere city. So I'll, I'll note for a notable incident on October 14th, deputies responded to a, a business on the 6900 block of Dunsmere Avenue uh, for a subject in the, the bathroom overdosing. Uh, Deputy Johnson arrived on scene and administered Narcan and was able to stabilize him to the point where they could be treated at, at Mercy Medical Center. Uh, right on. Yeah. And uh, I can't overlook the fire that occurred at the hotel here in town on the 16th. Uh, I think we all feel really lucky that we uh, lose our city on that one. <laughs> uh, I, I wasn't working that day. Uh, it's my understanding uh, Sergeant Stock helped as far as law, our law enforcement and sheriff's office involvement with, with uh, evacuations and uh, we assisted fire however we could. That actually brings up, uh, could we also at the same time, or what's the latest on the building and the inspection and all that? Well, I, I think that's a highly separate topic. Okay, I'm done. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Please continue. And all of you up without a hitch as far as the, we're aware. Uh, no injuries, no no massive incidents, anything like that. No kidnappings, homicides. <laughs> it was a good night. Yeah. Keep Dunsmere boring. That's right. We love boring. Mayor Brian, I do have I do have one thing to add. I had forgot. Um, 
I wanted to commend all of the all of the guys who went out on the snow removal and had to deal with all the numerous down trees and everything. It was a, a big burden to them. So I wanted to make sure that we commended them for getting that done. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other points of interest or notes? No, sir. It's fairly uninteresting. When, when, are, you, when are you coming back on day shift? Uh, January. Okay. Yep. Well, we look forward to seeing. Not that I'm counting. <laughs> so I have to make it through December. Thank okay. you, the country saw about that. <laughs> All right. Uh, any further questions of our police chief? All right. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Kaiser, would you like to begin with council comments? Sure. Um, I don't know if there's enough time left, but up at the high school right now, they're giving away turkeys and hams, I think. Um, if you miss out, contact the resource center. There are hams and turkeys available for those of you that can't get out and get them. Talk to Steve Bryant down there at the resource center. I commend Bruce and Steven, everybody that put that thing together tonight up there at the high school. Um, it was good spaghetti. It was good. And, and they have a lot of information there. I, 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 I really enjoyed what I saw, but we had to leave to come to the meeting here. <clears throat> um, let's see. Uh, Benjamin, I want to wish you the best of luck. The one thing I will have to say to you is if you're going to make it work, people couldn't wait to get here and cried when they had to leave. That's what you need to keep going. That love for, I don't want to go home, okay? Um, Mr. Arth, <laughs> yeah, but, but I want to thank you. It has been hard to sit the ring again. Many, 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 many hours this man has put in with. Water rigs, trash things. I mean, it, the list is the a garden. Good. The garden. The garden. Thank you, sir. I hope everybody will join me. Give him Mr. Arthur. It's not your last meeting. No, it's not. <laughs> it is. They're not, no. the, they're not the certified election holder. Oh. Oh, oh so you got it. <laughs> Take care. Yeah, you've got at least okay, one. Okay, we'll clap more. again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> premature something on the other note that the little personal i uh, uh i'm taking my contractor's test on monday so wish me luck so it's big dave construction soon soon to go that's all i got all right Thanks. thank you councilman castle councilman lucas thank you uh, just helped out Dustin with a couple of grants that are coming up. We did the edits for the Cal OES grant, which I think we have a really good shot of getting. Um, and then just moving over to working on a Prop 64 proposal. Um, they have the Prop 64 proposal basically awards state uh, cannabis tax funds to communities that allow cannabis. And they've upped the ante up from a million dollars over three years to $3 million over three years. And they've expanded the eligible expenses to include infrastructure, um, public health, uh, youth development. Um, there's a lot of options, uh, fuels management, forestry management. So we're preparing that application now and uh, just kind of took stock of all the grants that we're processing. And then I did talk to Rico today and I'll be presenting or at least not necessarily presenting, but I will be available for the electric charging station item to talk about that. Thank you so much. Vice Mayor George. Uh, thank you. Um, two things. Uh, first of all, um, what Dave was mentioning was the uh, what's on your plate um, that's been going on. I did some research to go back and look at it. Uh, back in 2017, um, Alex Rivera was at the uh, Resource Center, and uh, Andrea Hare was uh, a key supporter at that time. She just recently retired from the Resource Center in Weed. But we got together with a town hall, and the whole goal of that was to get all the resources that we could get out onto a brochure and give it to uh, the people in need. 
The next year along, um, Stephen Bryan came along and said, why don't we marry it up with uh, the turkeys and hams so that we can do two things. On one hand, we can give out turkeys and hams and give them a free meal. And on the other hand, we have a captive audience for all the various players of the Dunsmere Community Care Team, people like uh, uh, First Five and, and uh, Great Northern, et cetera, to come and meet the people that they're serving. And uh, unfortunately, this year, uh, we weren't able to get the kind of turnout we had. We had over 75 uh, turkeys waiting to be given out, 25 hams. So uh, eventually, I know the Resource Center will do that. But I'm hoping that uh, getting back on track next year, it'll be a, a permanent part of our culture. And it really does give everybody in the support world around the county an opportunity to have a one-on-one, -on -one, if you will, or one-on-many with the people in the room. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was um, I mentioned at the last meeting that there's a challenge going on at the local transportation commission with the fact that we just lost our executive director. Um, I've been talking with two of the other commissioners, uh, uh, Nancy Ogren and uh, Susan Tavalero, and we're making sure that that process moves forward with the RFP for the new bus system. But at the same time, I've been recognizing that we don't have the resources inside the county to be able to manage the correct writing of an RFP that would pull out the kind of results that we want. So liking the play outside the box, I decided to reach out to the uh, UC Institute of Transportation Studies. And I talked to a woman there named Laura Podowski. And uh, she pointed out to me that um, among the four, I guess, different um, UC campuses that have a transportation studies, the best one around is UCLA. And UCLA has a program where they have graduate students that can come onto a project they spend however long and so what I, I reached out to her and she said she would put me in contact with various people so what i'm trying to do is come up with somebody from a, one of the universities that could step in in this interim and provide the wisdom and the expertise to pull together all the financial resources that are available put it together and i'm also picturing it as an opportunity to be a pilot project that could be used in other rural uh, locations like ours so i'll let you know how that goes i just sent off my return email to her today, but that's something I'm exploring so we can move that forward. That's all I have. All right, thank you. Really quick, if you're looking into programs as well, Cal Poly does a similar program. Okay, great. Love that, thanks. Good, uh, Councilman Art. Well, I'm all confused now. I thought I was the dying swan. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, at the very least, you'll be at the next meeting. Uh, so I will save my comments for the last meeting, which will be the next meeting. Uh, I have four items. One is there was a celebration for Veterans Day, 11-11 at 11 o'clock. Uh, four residents of Dunsmuir gathered in the cemetery at the Veterans Memorial. Uh, one of them was Fred Taylor, who is a leader in both the Elks Club and the Eagles Club, and there's a liturgy for both of those clubs where they have prayers to recognize veterans, and they're extremely moving. Uh, I hope you get to hear them next year. Uh, your colleague, Richard Rick Sanders, United States Marine Corps was there. He gave his own prayers. And in talking with Fred Taylor, uh, I think Bombs Away next year will be working with the Eagles Lodge for a prayer session, a color guard session, a parade to the cemetery, and then food and beverage and horseshoes and whatever uh, to build it into the Veterans Day celebration that's appropriate for our community. Good luck. Uh, North State Giving Day is coming. And council member Deutsch mentioned, and so did Big Dave, the Community Resource Center. It's a big help in the spirit of giving thanks in this part of the year to give any support you can through the North State uh, Community Fund. Uh, everybody has their favorites. Mine are the Siskiyou Arts Museum and the Dunsmuir Community Resource Center, but anyone that could help even 20 bucks for a turkey, I encourage you to do that. Uh, I want to congratulate my friend and business partner, Victor Martin. Uh, Victor Martin was recognized by JEDI, the Jefferson Economic Development Institute, as a small business hero for what he's done with Pops. 
And finally, I hope the council can set aside a little bit of time at one of the December meetings, we now have framed the three historic photographs that Ron McLeod uh, donated. They've been framed by Lindsay Martin of Elemental Framing, and we hope to mount them with Wendy's help on the back wall here and have the unveiling, however the leadership of the council wants to do it. And certainly I hope you invite Ron McLeod, the city historian, uh, with a notion, whoever sits in these chairs, whether it's the planning commission or the city council, you'll look at that and reflect in your deliberations. Uh, Thank you. Right on. Thank you, Councilman Art. Um, most of my uh, activities will be covered in committee reports and the other items. So I think we should move forward <coughs> into committee reports. Yeah, that way. Are you back here? Okay. Yeah. One, one, one last thing. Uh, when I was at the thing tonight, they gave me this and I'm 6535. I know my code. That's my area. If something goes wrong, they put out there in that red alert. This is your area. It's up. It's only. So, uh, zone haven. Know your know your zone. Yep, for evacuations and emergencies. Cool. Um, so let's move into committee reports. Were there any committees that met? But we need to. Uh, committees didn't meet, but I would say the feedback I got is our green waste day was fairly successful. Uh, they were busy. The, the location. They were after yeah, I don't day. understand why somebody scheduled it for a rain day. Well, <laughs> it's a snow came the next day and knocked all the branches. Yeah, down. one week too early. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a start, and I hope continuing to work with DPAC, it, we have more of these events next year. I, I agree. I can kind of add to that. We did put out information related to all the down branches and trees, and we're taking those up by the ballpark, and we will um, have crews come in to. Uh, to have them chopped in, in cooperation with the um, parks district. So to be clear, anyone can bring uh, fallen limbs to correct the parking lot by the ball field. Limbs Anybody only. Or... We don't want big logs. We just the limbs that can fit through the trepper. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure the big logs won't last long. Is that just going to be like a revolving thing for a couple of weeks, or I don't. I they were meeting. I think they met today or yesterday. Through Sunday? Okay. okay. Could we yeah. have something that we could put on Facebook so we can get the word out? It's already out there. Oh, is it? Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. So the um, the Public Works Building Committee did meet, but we can defer that. Okay. Yeah. Right. That moves us into uh, consideration of the minutes for November 3rd. I make a motion to approve the minutes for November 3rd, 2022. Second. Uh, any discussion of the motion at hand? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Against? Motion carries unanimously. Mr. R, do you have to come up with one correction, one of our minutes before you leave, just for the whole sake of it all? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Find something, dude. We got one meeting with. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Bait him. The consent agenda for tonight is the check registry from October 29th through November 11th, and the resolution approving amendments to the CDBG Micro Enterprise Financial Assistance and Subsidy Subsistence Payment Guidelines, as well as a drought relief grant agreement. I make a motion to adopt the consent agenda. Second. Right. Any discussion? Very done. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, we have no public hearings tonight. So this brings us into full business. Um, tonight we have the public works building update. So in the over the last, I guess now I'm close to three months, uh, this has become one of the top priorities I'm trying to figure out in uh, working with Union Pacific and, and kind of some uh, alternative uh, ideas if we need them. Um, but uh, essentially we've, kind of scoured the city to find a flat location that's fairly centrally located. Um, and uh, really we've come down to about two parcels. Um, and just, uh, it's uh, it's been a definite challenge because it's uh, there's not a lot of flat locations uh, and there's not a lot centrally located if you're even looking. So uh, 
I don't know if we're, are we going to present what those locations are, or are we kind of, we're not ready yet? I think we, we certainly could. Okay. Yeah, we've looked really extensively. Um, I've, I've been helping on that side of it. Um, I'm allowing so, so I think we looked at what, 18 maybe? Uh, yeah, Something somewhere like around that. there, different locations. Both in, down to two. Both in city limits and out. Um, but you know, where it makes sense as far as our sphere of influence and utilities extend, um, not to mention future annexation prospects. Um, and we kind of circled back to one continuously as a, as a good second option that may end up being the way we go. But yeah, if you want to introduce the sites. Drum roll. Yeah, so so the the two sites, the one location is uh, on Florence Loop. There's a old uh, parking lot for the dealership there. Um, that's kind of, it's kind of this really odd shaped lot. Cross and, from Hill to Yeah, and so that is, uh, that is one of the parcels. And then the other one, we went, we ended up relooking at the at the one right behind the, the community the community center area, um, and kind of deciding in a different location rather than um, going the route we did before and digging into the hill and taking out the Lions building. We're looking to potentially build up and um, and build behind it. And so uh, I'm meeting with the uh, engineers tomorrow to walk the sites, and then they're going to work on a cost estimate. Um, I prepared a staff report to request some funding for that. So our deadline for move out is, is Octo uh, March. October, March. And so in March, we will not have a building to be in. And so we're trying to navigate that. Um, we, we asked them to get us at least through the snowy season. So we aren't out, out in the cold and, and dealing with that. But ultimately, you know, that facility is been in place since 1966 i believe was when that structure was built and really i mean the bones of it are good all you know to make it another 60 or 100 years we only really needed to put a new skin on it but unfortunately in that uh um when you take a building down you have to re-engineer it to put it back up so we are not going to be able to utilize that structure uh, without it being the same cost as the new structure and so ultimately we're going to have to build a building or have to buy one and uh so that's kind on of our property on our property this time so we don't have to worry about that again because it this is ultimately this is a hundred year decision and right. uh and i want to make sure we're doing it right and uh appreciate you know your input on on anything if you run out of time and you need something i got room in my garage <laughs> <laughs> well, well we, we should hopefully be able to get through this plowing season but if we're not ready to build come spring it's going to be very difficult to have a whole facility online by the, the following winter. Um, yeah, and it, the committee met and looked at both options. Um, the option by Dollar General is not owned by the city. Um, and as recently as uh, yesterday, the desire, well, the, the ability of us to purchase it is still kind of uh, being determined. Um, it's positive. Uh, they are interested in selling. So I guess the direction would be uh, investigate what the difference would be in the cost to prepare our own site that we already own. It'll be somewhat significant, cutting the trees down, uh, building a retaining wall, grading. The cost of cutting the trees alone could exceed the cost of buying the other piece of property. Exactly. So, so that's where we're weighing our, our, yeah. our skills. Um, but, would it be possible to uh, get, not to be put out publicly, but just for us to look at what the sketch of the property would look like now that you're visioning it over there by the community building. I mean, how, yeah. how would well, it be situated? What's being asked, and the committee was unanimous, I believe, it was uh, in pursuing this is we can't even make a decision until we know some hard and fast numbers and have like a site plan for each. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we also were, you know, until we had a commitment that evolved this week to sell on the other part, that one maybe wasn't even in consideration. We like it. But what, we're not going to sell at a reasonable price. Yeah. You know, what, what the committee is coming to council is city manager needs a little bit of uh, spending money so that he can buy and, and pay for things that we need to get us answers. So that's what that's what this was is a, a way to bring to council so that we could authorize him to have some spending money so that he could pay for the, the drawings and whatever it takes, you know, uh, cost assessments. So, and right. just general input. I know it's a big decision for us all and it can't be made by one or two of us, you know. It's a, it's a yeah. Well, has the city asked Union Pacific to help with this transition financially? I thought we did. 
Yeah, the, initially that and that answer is a pretty hard no. Um, they're not really even interested in they. They're interested in helping us through the transition. So if in the event we had to, we needed a place to to move to at interim, they're giving us a location down on the the south yard. Um, our hope is to not have to utilize that. Um, you know, the whole the lease the land thing kind of that. We, we've been down that road and I don't think that's not the best option for the city. I mean, we're not going anywhere. And, uh, and I think uh, they've been, they're, they're willing to help us if we have need bodies or whatever, they're willing to help us move out of there. But from a cost standpoint of building a structure, no. I I, and I somebody think that had some money that's here. I think as someone who spent a long time in landlord tenant relations, building on the comments we had earlier on the derail, it's somewhat arrogant of the Union Pacific Corporation to simply tell a small community like ours, move your public works building. It's a perfectly good building, but we're terminating the lease and we're kicking you out and we're making you move the structure and build a new structure. Uh, I don't think that's anywhere close to fair if we're going to have a partnership with Union Pacific going forward. Yeah, I thought that at one point, about the time we went over and had the uh, the tour of the of the area over there, there was a talk and maybe not from UP, but somebody else, maybe EPA or somebody that had some money available to help us with it. Wasn't no. that no. never was not with the building. But what they did at that time, she did say that, that they were going to help us get through the winter, not kick us out. And then it came up to where we got it till March. Well, and this gets into some intricacies, but technically even helping us take it down, you know, at no cost to us could be a, a help as far as Union Pacific may interpret it. Well, they could take it down all they want to after we leave, right? Yeah, but well, we don't need to get into that. I, I, there's no significant help. I don't know if maybe we could look into it, it again, but. Well, there's, I mean, this whole area of remediation. So with oversight from the federal EPA That's what I'm saying. and two state control agencies to remediate that area yeah. where our public works building is, that should be part of the exactly. remediation costs and not be borne by the taxpayers of the I city. Agree. Of well, that's what I thought was in place. And maybe it is and uh, doing whatever, but okay, it should be. Have you considered John Poston's building that's for sale uh, just north of the ball field? It's under contract. Okay. And we did consider that site. It was okay. considered from the beginning. Um, I think it's sold today. Yeah. Well, in contract, it's still developed, but it, it just wasn't the right location for our yard. Yeah, um, that's what yeah. I figured. But and certainly the building itself, even though it looks like it's a mechanic shop, it can't not. facilitate our equipment. So yeah. it essentially be, we'd have to flatten it and build new. And there's other places. It is flat. Yeah. yeah, I was just yeah. curious. No, we, we that was one of the locations, and and ultimately, one of the concerns I had, and, and we kind of worked through, was I don't want to take a potentially productive commercial property yeah. out of out of the Production. system in in hopes for it to be redeveloped, and that's yeah. really ultimately that kind of acts that one, and that's that's why the Dollar General one's nice because it's such an awkward. Yeah. Parcel, we could make it work, but not necessarily many other people can make yeah. it work. And okay. who wants to be at the entrance or exit of the interstate? And then yeah. there, I bet you the uh, new owner of Cave Springs would rather not have a pu public works building sitting right out front of his property. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so uh, a great many other um, lots were looked at. One thing I'd like to inform all this council, you know, for years we've heard negative comments about our 11 acres down to the south, and we even put them on the market. Uh, having walked it now, um, you don't know what will go there, but it's a good piece of land. Um, it's, it's a lot more, there's a lot more potential there than we've previously. Well, aren't there a lot of easements so they crisscross across it that make it un, a problem? I thought that was why we thought there was, a, with all the easements. Well, I just encourage uh, next time we ever make a decision on it, uh, let's let's visit it and cite sure. as a council. Would be okay. my encouragement. Okay. I'm happy to move this into public comment. All right. Um, so no further questions. I'll open public. Comment. Oh, we did that. Or, oh, on this one. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, public comment on the public works building. Um, 
who would like to make a public comment as before, please come to the podium or raise your hand if you're on Zoom. Wow, well, seeing none, I will close public comment. I'll be happy to make a motion to provide an initial budget of $10,000 from the general fund to provide a revised site evaluation and cost for the project. Second. Uh, motion and a second. Any discussion of the motion at hand? Uh, I'm going to vote no because I think someone else ought to pay. All right. Um, any further discussion or comments? No. Nope. Right. Well, like we do a roll call vote. Councilmember Arth? No. Councilmember Lucchese? Yes. Councilmember Keisler? Yes. Councilmember Deutsch? Yes. And Mayor Bryant? Aye. Motion carries. Electric charging station. All right, you ready, Councilmember Lucchese? <laughs> yes. New business item A. So this is my fault. I forwarded an email. Um, so right now there are two significant bills that are listed at the top of the staff report, AB 1236 and AB 970, and these are new state regulations around mandated streamlining permit processes for electric charging stations. The state of California is putting a big push forward for these and has deemed um, streamlining and effectiveness as one of the issues that they need to address. And so we need to put in place regulations and checklists to comply with these two state laws. Now it's important that we go through this process, even though it is a state mandated law and it is in fact, it, it is in effect currently, we need to adopt regulations as well as adopt a checklist for required submittals because what this does is it shortens the amount of review time for cities from a 30 or 45 day review period to a five and 10 day review period. And so it, it's really important for us to adopt regulations and adopt a checklist that's going to work for our building department, our planning review, because if we happen to become negligent at some point, because it does happen with a, short, a small staff, it happens with any staff, where if we were to get an application and not have any regulations set in place, someone could literally come to us with a napkin concept drawing and we would have to process that. And so having the checklist and the regulations standardizes what we would request in the application process to make sure that they're putting together a safe proposal and safe charging station construction um, schematic. The other thing too, is we don't want someone to submit an application and it goes unreviewed for the 10 day period and is automatically approved and then ends up starting someone's house on fire or starting a property fire because it was installed incorrectly. Um, because we were not able to review in the short streamlined um, process. So the checklist that's provided in the packet is adapted off of Sonoma counties or city of Sonoma, I can never remember which one, um, but it is from Sonoma and it's considered a best practice checklist for us to start with. This is being currently reviewed by the building official. It will not be approved today. So there may be some minor changes from today to the next meeting, which would not impact our ability to move this ordinance to a second reading, nor would it impact the adoption process because it's not a codified portion of the ordinance. Uh, but this is basically a very straightforward, this is the base documentation for compliance with the state. There's no added frills, bells or whistles on this. And then uh, we are currently working um, on the checklist portion. So today the request is to, um, basically make the findings for the CEQA exemption. Uh, so there is a CEQA guideline section 15061B3, which is a common sense exemption, which basically says that adopting this ordinance to put together a process and standards would not have any direct or indirect impact on the environment under the California Environmental Quality Act. And so we're hoping to adopt that general, uh, what we call a general uh, exemption or common sense exemption tonight and then move this on to a second reading at our next meeting. And so the actions at the next meeting would be to adopt the ordinance and then adopt the checklist. Question? Mm -hmm. um, I, I looked here at the definition of uh, the charging station and, and it really, doesn't it open itself up to even being one installed in someone's garage? 
That is actually going to be part of the new 2022 code update is that new construction residential will be required to install a phase two or phase three um, electric charging station mm. in all new garages. Interesting, but then again, it does it for some, for someone like myself that doesn't require, or somebody like that wants to install it now into their garage for They their, may do so. They, they can do so, but without having to go through any of this, right? Uh, you will, so this doesn't change anything. This okay. basically is already in place. So this took effect as of January 1, 2023, or 2022, excuse me, I'm already on the next year. <laughs> um, <laughs> my brain. Uh, no, you could actually go into installing a charging station within your garage or um, exterior charging stations are popular as well. It does require a building permit and this will not negate that. You will still be required to get a building permit, but what this does is it shortens our uh, review process for this. Um, there is actually also uh, several California and federal based reimbursement uh, programs that you can apply for that will actually reimburse you for the installation of a charging station on your property um, to charge your vehicle. I believe currently the state of California is covering up to 80% of the cost of installation of a charging station within uh, your home. Uh, as well as offering a significant amount of rebate programs for specific electric and hybrid vehicles within the state of California. And those are all based off of tax rebates. So what you're saying is at this point, we're not putting in anything that would affect us any other way other than just getting us set up for the future. Is that right? Yes. What this would do is it really um, defines what is needed in the application so that we have a requirement of certain standards. And then it will set up a checklist to make sure that what is being submitted will meet basic uh, health and safety standards. Okay. I don't suppose that this is retroactive in any way for anybody that has installed in the last year to get in on the reimbursement. If it's a tax credit situation, you may be able to. But... Yeah, I'm not. I'm not totally up on it, but it is the um, California Department of Energy. Um, they have a number of different programs right now going on, and then they update it pretty frequently in terms of the rebates related to vehicles as well, because obviously new vehicles hit the market. Um, they are assessed under that program and could have a reimbursement. I believe the highest up is up to $12,500. Yeah, and Tesla's, Tesla's beyond that, though, because the whole program was built to take new electric vehicle companies and get them up to speed. And Tesla has already gone past that point. So new Teslas don't qualify. Yeah, Tesla for any you're charging in your house. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, any additional questions? Yes, I, just one comment. Um, if we don't do this, what's the consequence? Uh, anyone could submit any concept drawing and we would have to then work with them and, and it would cause a lot more staff time for review. So if someone were to you know, draft on this piece of paper what they want to do, that could um, be admitted as an application. What, then we have to take the time uh, to look at that and make sure that it meets current state building code standards and then go back and forth with the applicant and have to respond within a certain amount of time. Um, so it creates a lot of overhead costs for our building and planning department. So by setting up a, a standard of we will require these pieces to the application, we're ensuring that the applications we're getting are the most complete information to be able to make an educated decision and yeah. approval process. Okay. And then follow up question, somewhat unrelated. Um, is there any carve out for the historic district or any planning oversight when it comes to approval within the historic district? Not under this one. So this is all based off of streamlining processes. Um, I am not familiar with what the aesthetic options are for a historic district with a charging station. We should look into that one. Well, not that I think it'd be bad. It's just we might want some input. So what, what you would probably have yeah. to do to do that is you would have to do an amendment to your historic district ordinance to have an aesthetics portion, which you probably should update that anyway, because you should include wireless and satellite pieces into that as well, um, as well as cellular towers and solar panels. Um, so there could be um, some room to improve the historic district to address that directly but I would not recommend addressing aesthetics in a streamlining process ordinance. Makes okay. sense. Cool. Thank you. Any comment? No additional questions. We'll open this up to public comment. If you would like to make a comment, please come to the podium or raise your hand if you're on Zoom. Seeing none, I'll close public comment for this item and commence with discussion. This isn't the first time that I've been sitting here talking about 
charging stations. Years ago, we had an opportunity to have one, but we lost that opportunity. Now it's like everybody's going to have to have one. It's just funny. Well, there are some at Yaks. <laughs> well, um, if this was my last meeting, I would be talking about vision and planning. But clearly the vision for the state of California is to be an international leader in renewable energy and to shift from fossil-based transportation to renewable energy-fueled transportation. Specifically, I-5 is likely to be designated as the electric highway going from the Mexican border to the Canadian border. And Bryce Craig and I, when Bryce was mayor, worked hard to convince Tesla to build a station here and the city wasn't ready to step up, nor was our serving utility. So we lost out to Mount Shasta. But now to make this whole thing work, the state is going to pour a tremendous amount of money into recharging stations, trickle charge, super fast charge. And it seems to me in 2023, uh, if you could sit down with our planning commission and deal with the related topics of parking in the historic district and recharging stations in the historic district, that might be a timely conversation. Thank you. I'm happy to move the item. Uh, we have a motion. Is there, there any further discussion or second? I would request that the motion on page 29 be read as is, just to make the findings of for the project to be exempt from CEQA. I move that you write such a good memo. I, I write this. This is, this is Rico. I Rico. Rico's this memo. is Rico, Rico. And he called me like 45 minutes before this meeting no. and asked me to do the report. This is very Rico-esque. I move that we make the findings that the project will not have a significant adverse impact on the environment and that it is exempt from environmental review pursuant to the California Environmental Quality Act guidelines, section 15061, paren B, paren 3. I further move that we introduce and read ordinance 574 by title only, and that we direct staff to bring back ordinance 574 for adoption at the next regular meeting. Second. I was going to let you get the second. No, that this was beautifully here. written. <laughs> I can almost dance to that. Again, it's all, all right. Rico. All right, all right. Any discussion of the motion at hand? No, sir. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Against? Motion carries unanimously. Good job. Do we have to do we have to then follow up and read by name only now? Isn't that what we just said here? It was it was just no no no. no you're we're good. good. We're no, good, good. Okay. okay. Yeah, we're good for today. We'll come back. Um, so Thank you, before Richard. going He's to safe. The, our closed session. I'd like to thank everyone who participated in the open session part of the meeting. Um, but let's take a five minute recess and we can be in for closed session. Oh, uh, future agenda items. So when we do that at the end of the meeting? Uh, it's before. Sure, let's do future agenda items. Um, I'd like to request a future agenda item on the next meeting. I would like to prepare a letter for council consideration and the mayor's signature to advocate to our federal representatives to um, basically look into the timelines for communication between Union Pacific <laughs> and jurisdictions and advocate for the requirement of a timely communication by requiring that it be done within a certain amount of time. I love meeting. this girl. Yes. Well, that'll go well because I'm sure Francisco will get a robust memo to our city manager about uh, how they calculate we'll the see. risk factor yeah. of hazmat in our river. How we did get lucky. And, and I will have, it just so happens that the uh, emergency response lead for Northern California was in Dunsmuir on the day of the accident. So, yeah, and still nothing from him. I did not hear anything. So, I will be talking with him. Mm -hmm. oh. So, yeah, I'd like to prepare a letter for us to sign to send to our federal and most likely our state representatives as well, advocating for regulations to be put in place to require them to notify all jurisdictions of potential issues for future spills and, and derailments. Yeah, Rico, right? That one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, on future agenda though um thank you due to uh holidays uh coming up and staff vacation times and availability um it was proposed that we move the we won't be able to have a meeting on the 15th of december 
Um, this could change, of course, if we're not certifying until December. But the plan, would, the plan would be to move the meeting to December 8th, so have a meeting back to back, um, and then take a nice long break for the holidays. Okay. Yeah, my understanding is that the clerk is predicting right now to have everything ready to go by December 20th, which is kind of late. Um, yeah, so hopefully, yeah, late. yeah, and so hopefully they will have everything in time for the next meeting. Oh, you said November or December? December. December. 20th? Yeah. yeah. They're having issues. So okay. Well, but uh it should be it should be done by it, it hopefully will be done by next meeting because why Rika's anticipating doing the council shift uh their second meeting in December. Okay. And to, so we, right? to Mr. Arth's okay. note on the, un try and do the first on the unveiling of the photos, I'd like to do that at the time where uh, Mr. Arth steps down and uh Councilman Clarno uh, joins us. I think that'd be a nice yeah yeah we don't know when that is we don't so that'll be pending uh certification so stick around um i've got a <laughs> couple things to bring up yeah um first of all um i'm not sure if uh um i'm not sure if we're ready for well i'm just do a blank i'm sorry go ahead i just had one of those senior moments well maybe you were thinking of the wi-fi Project. Yeah, that was one of them. I wanted to get an update on that. And the other so, one was the library. Um, if we could have a look at the library, because I keep hearing from yes. Karen what's going yeah. on. And okay. So I, I can give a quick update on the um, Wi-Fi. I'm in communication with the okay. company. They're, of course, eager to figure out whether we're going to move forward or not on it. But um, at the soonest we meet, probably in the second meeting in December. But it's really pending um, our city manager's ability to have the time to put together yeah. a comprehensive report. I just wanted to make just bring up and poke a little bit, but if everything's moving along, I'm perfectly happy. Yeah, but what the what library? Do you have something on the library? Um, there yeah. was there was a request that I have already directed at one point on how to go about that request to put a mural on the library. No, no, I'm not talking about Is that. that. What you're I'm talking about? about the roof. And the, by okay. the way, Karen said so, that she wanted yes. to thank everybody for the, the tarp that was put. So up. we did a we did a temporary kind of repair after we had a different contractor come out we actually found the the source of our issue at the library and so the cap on the on the the top cap Perfect. actually is leaking and allowing the water to get behind the stucco go down through the wall and into the library so brian went out put some sand put a tarp over the top some sandbags and this last rain we had no leakage and so um but there is also a request for a mural, but I, I'm That's not ready. To, I'm not ready to bring that forward yeah. due to some repairs that need to happen to the library prior to anything like that happening. That's what I was worried about the repairs. I just wanted to open. Yeah. So, so there's actually two sets of repairs. So one of them is fix the cap. The other one is we need to look at the stucco. But I don't know that we. The leak has gone so bad that the stucco is effervescent. It ain't holding. It's got to come off. Yeah. So Maybe let's get back to the agenda at hand. Yeah. We're not requesting a future agenda right, item. We can certainly have an update on library the yeah. future agenda. Thank you. All right. Well said. Any additional future agenda items? No. I make a motion to adjourn for a five minute recess before no, closed session. I think it's a motion. It's a. I can so just call it. okay. You can just call a recess. It's been called. Yeah. yeah. We'll have a five minute. Uh, my water bottle. Recess. Five minute recess. So that's how we do things. Yeah. We got fun. Ew. Is three and one on the way? It's been a while since we had any fist cups. Yeah. Did you spit it out? No, no, I, I almost I almost drank it, but it's it's been open. Someone was drinking from it. And so I was like, I went and looked at it. I was like, this is 